Hello people, in this video let us look at this retinitis pigmentosa. Okay, so basically this is coming under this topic retinal dystrophies. So first of all, look, let us look at the terminologies. Retina, you know what retina is, right? So inside your eye, here you have this yellow line which they are showing. We are marking in red. This one is the retina, right? At the back of your eye, in the most, you have this light sensitive tissue, right? This is the retina. Okay, dystrophy, what do you mean by dystrophy? Any disorder, right? Any disorder, you can say dystrophy. Okay, pigmentosa. Basically, this is a part of the name of the problem itself, right? Retina pigmentosa, retinitis pigmentosa. Here, itis word is used. Strange, let us look at why, okay? So, you have understood now what exactly we are dealing with, right? So, now let us look at retinal dystrophies. There are many type of retinal dystrophies. In that, we will be looking only at this retinitis pigmentosa. We are concerned only with this. This is a generalized photoreceptor dystrophy. So, basically, the entire retina can be involved. That's why it is generalized, right? And um, the, one of the examples is retinitis pigmentosa. So, basically, this uh, retinitis pigmentosa here, what is affected is the rods. The rod cells are affected, okay. More than the cones, the rod cells are affected. Now, you hope you know the layers of the retina. Now, if this is the retina, guys, and if this is the light coming here, so this will be your eyeball, right. So, the eye uh, light is coming here. So, here you have the retina. That retina has a few layers. So, here you have the pigmented layer, right. Pigmented epithelium is there here. This is called as the RPE, retinal pigmental epithelium. Then here what you are seeing is rod and cone. Here you can see the rods and cones. Actually, the cones are responsible for color. You can remember cones for color. So what is rod? What are rods responsible for? So rods are responsible for th so many things. Rods are responsible for low light vision. Okay. So basically this is nothing but scotopic vision. These rods, they have a purplish red protein. Purplish red. Let's put a purplish red color weight purplish red color okay can't find it so we look at a purplish purple purple visual purple rhodopsin okay so this is the pigment which is there here the rods contain a purplish red protein called as a rhodopsin or visual purple this is which is it which is, it is visual purple this is there in the rod so now you can understand the word pigmentosa why they are using even cones have pigments and uh, cones will have many types of pigments okay because it, cones are responsible for color vision so now are you getting an idea in retina pigmentosa there is some disorder with the rods right which help in scotopic vision that is low light vision right so some kind of a hereditary disorder they are telling here. So here what will happen if this person is affected usually he will have problem in seeing in the dark so night blindness kind of a thing. How is it going guys are you able to understand so basically we are looking at retina pigmentosa some problem with the rods usually with the rods in the retina. This disorder usually can be autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, X-linked, so many varieties are there, okay. So here who is affected? The rod, rods are affected. So death of rod photoreceptors by apoptosis. So apoptosis is a death of the cell, right? It is a programmed cell death. So this happens, the rods kill themselves, suicide. So now you will say, Retina, pigmentosa, who are affected, rod cells are affected, there is death of rod cells. So what will happen? This person will have problem in seeing in the night. Low vision, low light vision will be affected. So what and all will happen? Night blindness is a characteristic and earliest feature. Okay, It is the earliest feature. It may be present several years before visible changes in the retina occur. So, maybe they have it from many, many years, okay. The next thing is dark adaptation. This is a very late development. They are saying the dark adaptation, but the light threshold of the peripheral retina is increased, okay. Then tubular vision. Tubular vision is, there is loss of peripheral vision, right. He is able to see the central vision, the central part he is able to see. So, this is tubular vision, right? You are holding a tube and inside the tube you can see nicely. Have you held a tube and see that is retina pigmentosa. Hold this, make your hand into a, a, a tube like this and keep it to your eye and look through that hand like a tube. So, in the center you can see nicely but surrounding peripheral you are not able to see. This is retinitis pigmentosa. So, you understood retinitis pigmentosa, you will have tubular vision. Okay, central vision is normal. 
then after some time with central vision will go so now this person will come to you what and all you will see let us see fundus changes we will see what and all we can see in fundus changes retinal pigmentary changes so you will see some pigmentary changes in the retina so what will you see some words here you should say bone corpuscles bone corpuscles some specific words okay so around the veins okay perivascular you will see some jet black spots resembling bone corpuscles in shape so hopefully you are able to see something like that in this diagram jet black spots so you know how the normal fundus looks don't you so what will you see in the fundus bone corpuscles very specifically you should say these are retinal pigmentary changes these are found in the equatorial region initially and then they spread both anteriorly and posteriorly okay then retinal arterioles so let us see what happens to the retinal arterioles they are attenuated narrowed and they become thread like so thread like okay so what are happening to the arterioles arterioles are becoming thread like okay then thinning and atrophy of retinal pigment epithelium is seen in the mid and far peripheral retina so they are saying when it comes to the retinal pigmental epithelium retinal pigmental epithelium there is thinning and atrophy of this retinal pigmental epithelium and where will you see it in the mid and far peripheral retina with relative sparing of the retinal pigmental epithelium at the macula so usually this thinning and atrophy of the retinal uh, of this retinal pigmental epithelium where does it happen usually in the peripheral retina in mid and far peripheral retina there is sparing at the macula so you know where the macula is right the macula is here around this part the retinal pigmental epithelium is fine but mid and far peripheral retina there is going to be thin and atrophied retinal pigmental epithelium you know what retinal pigmental epithelium is so here you see the inner most layer of the retina this is the retinal pigmental epithelium right so this one will get thinned and atrophied in what all this is happening in retinal nitis pigmentosa so what and all we saw till now can you review till now what and all fundus changes we saw first of all there will be um, some pigments some bone corpuscles will be there then the arterioles are all very uh, thread like and then third thing now you have said is the retinal pigmental epithelium there is thinning and atrophy now let us look at the optic disc becomes pale and waxy so the optic disc becomes pale and waxy so look at this this is the optic disc in this one and here this one hopefully so basically you can see it is pale and waxy so there is optic atrophy also later and then there will be some associated changes also like there can be some colloid bodies choroidal sclerosis cystoid macular edema atrophic or cellophane maculopathy so at least some things you remember cystoid macular edema can happen colloid bodies can be there choroidal sclerosis can be there and some maculopathies can be there atrophic or cellophane maculopathy okay so this covers the retinal retinitis pigmentosa clinical features in that the fundus examination we have finished so in fundus examination let's review fundus examination what and all will be there first of all you will see that there is a bone corpuscle that is pigment uh, pigmentary changes bone corpuscles the arterioles are thread like there is retinal pigmental epithelium will have thinning and atrophy the optic disc has become pale and waxy and a lot of other changes can be there which are associated okay now let's move on so let us look at the visual field changes in retinitis pigmentosa okay so here you should know this uh, this thing here ring shaped scotoma so ring shaped scotoma will be an important word ring shaped scotoma basically you will see where in retinitis pigmentosa so it corresponds to the degenerated equatorial zone of retina so basically you know how you mark this right in physiology you have studied so you are checking the visual field how you will do perimetry you remember these charts that you have done in physiology this is the same perimetry chart now you are doing the visual field there you are seeing ring shaped scotoma where in retinitis pigmentosa so basically uh, central vision is there that means tubular vision is there for the person finally he will lose that also right ring shaped scotoma tubular um, vision where will you see ring shaped scotoma tubular vision in retinitis retinitis pigmentosa so patient has come in with these kind of uh, symptoms right night blindness dark adaptation tubular vision etc 
then you check the fundus you saw some things then you have checked the uh, visual field you have, you have seen ring shaped scotoma now let us look at some more uh, things here like electro retinogram this you should know electro retinogram erg so initially subnormal scotopic affected before photopic so the low light vision will be affected and b wave will be affected here they are saying the b wave will be affected before the a wave so this will be initially subnormal and what about electrooculogram this will also be subnormal electrooculogram is subnormal with an absence of light peak okay subnormal what about this electro retinogram important it is initially subnormal b wave affected before a wave scotopic will be affected before photopic and eventually extinguished gone let's look at the treatment and then we will look at some other topics okay now we have come till here you have seen the patient you have done all the analysis now what are the treatments you will give so there is no effective treatment for this uh, disease they are saying because uh, it is apopt apoptosis the cells are killing themselves uh, some autosomal recessive autosomal dominant some extinct something and all they have said right mainly their cause is saying they are, they are telling it is hereditary so basically they will try to stop the progression they will try to delay it so they'll give some vasodilators placental extract transplantation of rectus muscles into subcoroidal space light exclusion therapy ultrasonic therapy acupuncture all that okay so recently they have found that vitamin a that is 15 uh, 15000 international units per oral right um, palmitate form has been recommended to check its progression so this is recommended vitamin a is recommended in such people curi means what four times daily not sure why they didn't write in capital though then what else can you do in these people if there is any refractive error you can give them spectacles right then you can give them uh, low vision aids magnifying glasses night vision device can be given right then uh, if there is cystoid macular edema so you saw that uh, here that there could be cystoid macular edema if cystoid macular edema is there then they can give acetazolamide right systemic acetazolamide to treat this edema to reduce the edema they can try to do some rehabilitation now what about uh, preventing this disease prophylaxis of retinitis pigmentosa retinitis pigmentosa so if you want to prevent it so basically consanguineous marriages uh, should be discouraged right people should not marry among their relatives genetic counseling should be done right if people have this kind of issues so that's all that's all can be done to prevent any genetic issue right so this is uh, what we have as of now for retinitis pigmentosa so basically near relatives people should not marry okay this is what genetic counseling this is more like a preventive measure then what else guys so do you know what uh, nyctalopia is nyctalopia is nothing but night blindness you can see it where in vitamin a deficiency in retina uh, retinitis pigmentosa etc so uh, here itis word actually we couldn't justify right we can justify the pigment word because in fundus changes we have seen um, that there are pigmentary changes okay then uh, coming to this one dark adaptation means you know no when you are in the uh, when you're looking at bright light suddenly you enter a dark room it will take time for you to see that is an all dark adaptation so here that will be affected where in all can you see ring shaped scotoma and retinitis pigmentosa and even in glaucoma you can see okay tubular vision where in all you can see again in glaucomatous uh, field defect then again in retinitis pigmentosa advanced stage guys just one more topic is there under this retinitis pigmentosa in the textbook just let's look at this uh, associations of retinitis pigmentosa is there and atypical also is there just look, let's look at the associations some ocular associations with uh, this retinitis pigmentosa there can be uh, primary open angle glaucoma right uh, myopia can be there micro ophthalmos can be there conical cornea right is that is keratoconus can be there posterior subcapsular uh, cataract also can be there okay so did you understand the ocular uh, associations these and all can be there okay oops all these uh, myopia uh, primary open angle glaucoma microphthalmos conical cornea that is keratoconus subcapsular uh, posterior subcapsular cat cataract all these can be associated 
systemic association many are there just look at these okay refsum syndrome usher syndrome where there will be there can be deafness right then uh, halgren's syndrome koran's weig syndrome bald et beidel syndrome okay if you can remember the remember these names lastly let's finish off the next thing a typical forms of retinitis pigmentosa retinitis pigmentosa sign pigmento this is an atypical form then you have sectorial retinitis pigmentosa then you have pericentric retinitis pigmentosa then you have retinitis punctata albescens okay then that's all guys so there are some atypical forms actually in this uh, cone rod dystrophy the cones are destroyed earlier that's what they are saying okay and there will be severe destruction of these cones so cones will be affected first they are saying so let's take a quick recap of what we have seen in this video that is about retinitis pigmentosa so first of all retinitis is pigmentosa you should think some pigment on the retina yes i can imagine the diagram all pigments are there on the retina when i look at the fundus something like this then what and all we saw why the terminology we saw that then we saw that it is a type of retinal dystrophy it is a generalized condition that means everywhere it is there in the retina here basically the rods are usually affected low light vision will be affected scotopic vision is affected there is a top toes apoptotic death of the rod photoreceptors okay then what will be the symptoms of the patient night blindness dark adaptation will be having problem to be large vision then even central vision can be lost that is nyctalopia will be the night blindness okay now what will you find in the patient that is the signs fundus you will see bone corpuscles thread like retinal arterioles retinal pigmental epithelium will be thin and atrophied the optic disc will be pale and waxy okay then visual field you will see what ring shaped scotoma in retinitis pigmentosa then electrophysiological changes you saw this erg that is electro retinogram in this you saw there will be sub what was the word they used it it is subnormal and the b wave is affected before the a wave just in treatment you say you, you just stop the progression of the disease give vitamin a genetic counseling further etc so there is no specific treatment otherwise refractive errors you will con control if there is glaucoma you will give acetazolamide right or uh, some relief measures you will give right some uh, night vision spectacles right so they are saying low vision aids then what is correct any refractive error for the cystoid macular edema you can give acetazolamide okay what is acetazolamide guys it is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor weak diuretic it is okay then moving on so tubular vision you can see in retinitis pigmentosa ring scotum also you can see in retinitis pigmentosa associations you have seen that's all guys atypical forms also we have seen the just the names okay that's all in retinitis pigmentosa hope you like this video bye bye guys um, just uh, let us look at the latest developments in retinitis pigmentosa okay from the latest edition of the textbook let us look at some changes that have happened so basically in the latest edition of textbook what they are saying okay maybe this was there in the older edition also it is not just genetic okay it can happen sporadically 50% cases can be sporadic just randomly it can happen 50% can be inherited okay so this is one of the things where you see autosomal and x linked both coming together so it is allosomal and autosomal right it is sex linked it is uh, not sex linked uh, sex linked also and it is autosomal recessive also dominant also some kind of a weird thing that we have seen only in retinitis pigmentosa okay then specific gene names and all if you want to know you'll have to look at the textbook for this so they're saying autosomal dominant is very common okay autosomal dominant is very common autosomal recessive is less common okay and uh, this autosomal dominant which is more common luckily it will be less severe best prognosis 
so that is good right whatever usually is common that will have least severity and better prognosis least severe and better prognosis so the next thing they are saying is autosomal recessive but do you see this though it is dominant okay dominant that's why it's common right because it is dominant it is common isn't it because even if one allele is there it is enough okay then you have x linked x linked that is xlr they're calling it as xlr so this is the least common okay so this is the most severe that is bad least common but most severe okay so then what else there are a lot of other things that you can look at from the textbook in this they are again putting it as simplex and multiflex multiplex not multiplex like your theaters it's multiflex okay simplex they are saying isolated cases with one family member affected or something like that multiflex is like at least two family members are affected so basically this is very severe right this is bad so by the time these people become like third decade 30 years 20 to 30 years that range third decade they will be blind okay diagenic inheritance is very rare so just remember in retina retinitis pigmentosa in retinitis pigmentosa you can have autosomal x linked everything dominant recessive all sorts of combinations are possible in one disease interestingly then what else did we see any new things we saw they are saying retinitis is pigmentosa there are types type 1 retinitis is pigmentosa and type 2 retinitis pigmentosa type 1 is what you already have heard right it is coming early the rods are going to be destroyed there is diminished night vision right so all this you already know so where are the rods guys here see they have marked the rods here so basically these are the rods so you can see how they look they are all kind of rod shaped right the cones are very conical it's easy to identify the cones the rods are actually destroyed right then what about type 2 type 2 is nothing that that cones you studied no in uh, atypical that they have put here as type 2 so here they are saying both rods the rods and cones are affected and the this comes in adulthood and it is very progressive so this is progressive here you saw in type 1 it progresses slowly only but here it is progressive right it comes in adulthood suddenly progressive and then this person will have the loss of vision okay Rod, rods and cones both will be affected then what else is new Okay, in treatment, there are some better things. So, let us look at this. So, people will be interested in treatment. Won't you be interested in some new, new treatment? Yes. So, basically, they are saying you can use something like a retinal prosthesis, a bionic eye to help blind patients. Now, what is this bionic eye? It's kind of an eye that is looking for you. It will do the image capture. Nice, na? Then, obviously, there are a lot of new things here. Like, look at this here stem cell therapy right so they have stem cell therapy they have gene therapy so many therapies have started now so stem cell therapy what is there bone marrow derived something bone marrow therapy they have then embryonic stem cells right so a lot of new new things are there gene therapy trials are going on all these are in trial stage okay so guys what are we looking at retinitis pigmentosa we are just looking at some latest information available in the latest edition of the textbook okay then in associations of retinitis pigmentosa just note some terms here probably we have not covered in the previous video usually associations are not present okay that will be called a simple retinitis pigmentosa or non-syndromic retinitis pigmentosa if associations are present which will happen in 25 percent of the cases that will be called a syndromic retinitis pigmentosa okay usher syndrome now they are saying there are three types of usher syndrome where there will be retinitis pigmentosa plus labyrinthine deafness okay so all this uh, associations you'll have to look at each one detail in a different video or from the textbook what else 
So basically in atypical forms of retinitis pigmentosa, now we have only these four. That cones, uh, cones, cones thing, we have moved it as type 2 retinitis pigmentosa. Now atypical forms, we have already seen retinitis pigmentosa, sign pigmento. So here there is no visible pigmentary change in the fundus. So this will be pigmento, like no pigmento, no pigment, retinitis pigmentosa, sign pigmento, no visible pigmentary changes in the fundus. Then, then you know the other atypical forms, right? Okay, that's all we wanted to cover as the latest things in retinitis pigmentosa. Okay, that's all for now. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.